Hey, welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and I am back yet again for yet another Retro Shiz look back at the past. Today we're going to be activating our Power Cosmics and heading all the way back to 1997 for the 30th anniversary toy line of the Silver Surfer by Toy Biz. Now, who is this so-called Silver Surfer? Well, the Sentinel of the Spaceways, the Silver Surfer, one of Marvel Comics' most enigmatic and philosophically rich characters, made his first appearance in the Fantastic Four, number 48, published in 1966. Created by writer Stan Lee and artist Jack Kirby, the Silver Surfer was introduced as the Herald of Galactus, a cosmic entity who consumes planets to sustain his existence. The storyline famously known as the Galactus Trilogy spans issues number 48 to 50 of the Fantastic Four, of which the Silver Surfer, originally Norrin Red from the planet of Zen La, agrees to serve Galactus in exchange for the safety of his home world. Endowed with a fraction of Galactus's power cosmic, he gains a nearly indestructible metallic body and a surfboard-like craft that allows him to travel faster than the speed of light. His initial role as Harbinger of Destruction is challenged when he encounters the human race and their capacity for hope and resilience, leading to his eventual rebellion against his master, Galactus. Flash-forwarding two years with Silver Surfer number 1, released in August 1968, marks the debut of the Silver Surfer in his own solo comic series. Written by Stan Lee and illustrated by John Bushima, the issue delves deeper into the Surfer's backstory and his philosophical musings. The inaugural issue recounts Norrin Rand's transformation into the Silver Surfer, his service to Galactus, and his ultimate betrayal of his master to then save Earth. The series explores themes of freedom, sacrifice, and the surfer's quest for redemption and understanding in a universe filled with both wonder and malevolence. The poignant and introspective nature of the character, combined with Bushima's dynamic artwork, establishes the silver surfer as the tragic hero of the Marvel Universe. Hence, 30 years into the future with 1997's Toy Biz, the Silver Surfer 30th Anniversary line, kicking it off with Norrin Rad himself, Silver Surfer, with his cosmic power surfboard. And I always loved the artwork on these cards. Very egg-shaped, very different, but very much the alien look for such a toy line for the Silver Surfer. On the back, it was very much the space theme with everything that you would know about the Silver Surfer, the accompanying figures for this line, and just overall what you would be getting in the package, how it works, the whole nine yards. And to this day, we're still seeing it with retro card backs with Marvel Legends and Harry Moore design. And I loved seeing the big splash right here, everything that you could hope to achieve in collecting every single figure in this line. And of course, for some reason, if you're in 1997 and you need to scan these barcodes, here is the one for Silver Surfer. How do I know it's Silver Surfer as well? His name is right there on the barcode, and I absolutely love that. Now, moving on to figure number two, we have the Next Herald of Galactus after Norrin Rad, the Silver Surfer, with Frankie Ray Nova. And don't get confused, it's not the Nova Corps, it's just Nova, the Herald of Galactus. And I love how she was packaged back in the day. It looks like she's activating a big old solar blast, big fiery explosion. On the backside, again, very much the same, very much that space theme. You could freeze frame this if you want to read up on our gal Nova here and how she was originally Frankie Ray from Earth. And now she got entangled with Galactus and Silver Surfer. Now, her hair, which you'll soon see, could be kind of cumbersome, but more on that in just a few. And here's the barcode for Nova. Moving on, we have a very, we'll say confusing character, but a gorgeous looking action figure with Megan Alien and his Earth Tremor Detector. Now, take note of what this figure looks like, especially the color of his skin. On the back side of the card, again, same write-up, same dealio. You're gonna get to learn all about these characters, but what is perplexing to me is that this particular figure, the Megan Alien, seems to only exist within the confines of this Toy Biz action figure line. The Megan Alien with his Earth Tremor detector is pretty well established here in this little blurb. He's constantly on the lookout for Galactus trying to stay one step ahead of him. In looking up this character, in the research of this character online, I found that the Megan alien might actually be this 
Megan alien. You take an E out and you get Megan, which, yes, that kind of sounds weird, but if you look at the artwork of which on the back side of the card, he is orange, and this old school artwork of the Megan alien is orange, you can kind of put two and two together. Yes, there are some similarities, but there are some key differences as well. The Megan aliens, with the Marvel comics at least, kind of got their debut in the old Godzilla comics, but if you look at the fingertips, the more suction cup looking elements, but rounded ears instead of pointed ears, of which these characters also appeared in issues of Quasar. And digging a little bit deeper, the Megan slash Megan aliens that supposedly may be interswappable may have gotten their start in Tales of Suspense number 38, possibly 1963, in and around that area, of which they either come from the planet Mega, as in Megans, get it? Or Mego for Megan. So it's a, it, again, it's kind of a, a, a mishigash of all these different terms Megans, Megans, Mego, Mega. You get the idea. But at some point, apparently in Tales of Suspense, uh, Iron Man did meet up with them. So again, before the crafting of the Marvel Universe, of which we know it as it is today, there were elements, there were ideas tossed around, Jack Kirby-inspired elements, lots of different tales, lots of different aliens, of which, yes, you could take these orange skin Megans slash Megans and combine them with the green skin Megan slash Megan's with the suction cups and bingo bango, you have this really cool looking action figure now. But more so this Megan Megan alien looks to be a hybrid, if anything, of various characters, various aliens that have appeared within the Silver Surfer. And looking at the green reptilian nature of this skin, this is almost like the Silver Surfer aliens of the Badoon. But it's kind of fascinating. It looks like they took certain liberties here and there and ended up crafting a very interesting action figure that's more so more interesting than the old school Megan aliens and that the Megan aliens are just kind of cooler to look at. Although later down the road, if we ever to get a Marvel Legends redo of this figure, I would love to see an orange skinned Megan Megan alien. Also, Alan, the alien, definitely reminds me of a Megan Megan alien. So that might be a little nod in a reference in the Invincible comics. So be on the lookout if anyone out there finds any more information. I find this to be quite intriguing, but in all honesty, it could just be they just wanted to create a new character and we got a green, long-armed Megan alien that just kind of shares similarities with the Megan alien. Now, to wrap things up, we have the one. We have the only Beta Ray Bill, and he looks fantastic. I gotta say, he comes with Stormbreaker because... Of course he should. Now, like with all the other characters in this line, you get a nice write-up of this terrifying corpse horse alien. That was one thing that always bugged me about Better Ray Bill, is that he's quite frightening looking. <laughs> I don't really know what to really make of this character sometimes. And as always, if you get stuck on anything here, be sure to call that Toy Biz toll-free customer service number. Man... I miss a calling that. But enough about all that, the Cosmos beckon. So this is going to be an absolute blast. Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a retro shiz look back at the 1997, the Silver Surfer 30th anniversary toy line by Toy Biz. Now, first and foremost, we're going to kick it off with the Megan Alien, Megan Alien at this point, whichever one you want to call him. But it doesn't dispute the fact that it's a gorgeous looking action figure, along with a gorgeous accessory with his Earth Tremor detector. Now, if I didn't know any better, I would say this is more of a restraining unit. Like, this alien is a criminal, and that's kind of how I always thought about him. Very much reminds me of the Toy Biz The Vault figure line with Stegron, Typhoid, Mary. It's very well done. It's got a beautiful wash. It has this big red inner tube that combines into the helmet piece right there and simply just attaches. And you've got this really cool red ruby quartz sort of visor that folds down. And there's no peg. There's nothing to attach to the alien. It simply just 
attaches to him, which is nice to see. The restraints, the cuffs on the back, along with the belts, everything's painted, a little beep beep machine, and then you have this really awesome looking alien. And at this point, like I said, call him whatever you'd like. He's just very fascinating, very cool to look at, and something that to this day really stands out amidst the Toy Biz and the Hasbros and all the Marvel Legends and everything that has come to this point. He has his big old suction cup looking fingertips. He's got a big old green pot belly with very cool craggy reptilian skin and he's got his gloves that go all the way to his alien biceps. Very minimal articulation, but it doesn't dispute the fact that the sculpt is there. He even has a little pocket on the back with some ammo and a belt and a little bit of a Egyptian looking loincloth kind of deal. But hey, his big old purple pants along with his big old claw and hopper feet again with suction cups and his boots. They swivel at the feet. They'll swivel at the hands. And overall, he's just an exciting looking figure. But he can be kind of difficult to stand. You really kind of have to learn the articulation, the very basic articulation. But the articulation nonetheless, because he could be kind of top heavy and well, he'll go side to side. When you want to fix his earth tremor detector, like I said, nothing to peg in. He simply just attaches onto his back. You hook up his cuffs, which, yeah, that works. Fold down the mask and bingo, bango. Yeah, you got yourself a very cool looking Megan alien. Again, not so much an earth tremor detector device as it is something that's restraining this criminal or whatever I thought of as a kid, but I love the visor. I think that that is very cool. The cuffs will kind of sort of stay on. They're a little bit difficult sometimes, especially when you start moving the figure's arms, but regardless, beautiful sculpt, beautiful accessory, mind-numbing mystery of what I'm actually looking at, but god dang, that is a cool looking action figure. Next up, we have Beta Ray Bill, or Better Ray Bill, however you'd like to pronounce it. But again, what a glorious action figure. All that chrome, especially on Stormbreaker. It just looks so dang cool with all its reflective glory. And I love the fact that Stormbreaker was given to Beta Ray Bill by Odin because... Beta Ray Bill is worthy. And I like there's a little bit of brown paint on the handle. You got a silvery strap, although that strap isn't attaching to any wrists anytime soon. Beta Ray Bill himself. Again, that chrome goes onto the figure and it's just so sparkly. It just catches your eye, really makes him stand out, especially some of the Kirby inspired painted artwork on his chest to his legs. Again, the chrome with the knee pads, the boots. He's very pre-posed. He's very much an old school Playmates Ninja Turtle in so many ways, but he has those Jack Kirby hands with this side obviously being slated to hold the Stormbreaker, but he has this giant red cape. And recently I heard someone attributed to his a giant red bell pepper, which I do not disagree. It definitely looks like that. It comes off if you'd like. It's simply held in there by two pegs. It stays for the most part on its own. But as you can see, the back is very much just his black shirt. You get to see the chrome, the white gloves, the accents, the paint, his Asgardian helmet, his really weird corpse horse face which is just terrifying again minimal articulation very pre-posed one foot being flat the other one being a little bit risen up on that side so again he can be kind of hard to stand but that's where his giant red bell pepper cape comes in so you simply get his stormbreaker in hand you get his cape attached and bingo bango yes you got yourself one killer looking beta ray bill of which this figure is highly praised even to this day. And while he may not be the perfect addition to your modern Marvel Legends shelf, it's still an amazing chromed out toy and one that I highly recommend. Continuing on, we have Frankie Ray Nova, the next herald of Galactus. And you can immediately see that this figure is very special. She does have this big fiery blast as a base. It's very gummy, but it does a great job at keeping her aloft and keeping her standing as this figure will kind of suffer from being a little bit all over the place and very back heavy, but this is a great way to kick things off. Frankie Ray, Nova herself, the chrome 
is beautiful. She looks like she stepped right out of the comic books, right out of the animated series that was soon to follow this toy line. But she does have this giant fiery blast of segmented hair, of which is not only useful, but can be kind of cumbersome when you want to stand her on her own without the fiery base because it is permanently attached. She will have a couple screw holes on the back. It's not really something you'll immediately see. It's very much the chrome which will catch your eye throughout in moving this figure around, of which you'll see she has some newer articulation. It's very much the genesis of the articulation we see now every day with our modern action figures. But in the knees, the feet, you can definitely get her into some cool flying positions, get her hovering off the ground, put her into the palm of your HasLab Galactus. Because when you asphyx her hair to the base, you become knowledgeable with how to balance her correctly because that will definitely play a role in really having fun with this figure. She's a little all over the place, but with a little determination, yes, you can get her standing well, standing beautiful, flying off into the cosmos, and for that alone, with all the chrome, with the sculpt, the articulation, this Frankie Ray outdoes anything we have nowadays as the Herald of Galactus, known as Nova. Which thus leaves us with our fourth and final figure of our 30th anniversary wave, Norin Red himself, the Silver Surfer. And what's the first thing you're going to think when you see this figure? For me, where is the chrome? Now, my very first figure of the Silver Surfer was an old Toy Biz one that came with a CD-ROM. Of course, he comes with this silver surfboard, but it's a very shortened silver surfboard. But he does have some pegs and some feet holsters to keep him securely onto his board. He also has the fin on the bottom, which, hey, looks great, but... It's very teeny tiny. It's very much a surfboard and not the Silver Surfer's elongated spacecraft in so many ways. The Silver Surfer himself... Very much a silver figure, but could you imagine what this figure would have looked like with all the chrome that Frankie Ray and Beta Ray Bill share? Now, he's got some really cool musculature. It's very much the Silver Surfer. He's got 1997 stamped on the bottom of his foot. Yes, I would say that it kind of resembles Jack Kirby's artwork, kind of a mishigash of a bunch of different artists over the years, but the articulation is, I'll say, leaves a little bit to be desired, right? Now, if you look at it, yes, he will have several segments. He does have elbows. He's got knees. He also has fingernails, which is very odd in the sense of the Silver Surfer. In the terms of his chest and then how you kind of position him, the articulation is kind of cumbersome overall. Yes, for back in the day, it totally works. It's totally different. He has waist, he's got legs, he's got knees, but nothing at the feet. He will have peg holes, of course, but he's very much a pain to kind of get him to do what you'd want or what you'd think you'd want to do when posing out Silver Surfer on his Silver Surfboard. But alone for a 1997 figure of the Silver Surfer, he is a little bit large. Again, keep in mind, all these figures aren't really scaled to one another. They're all just kind of art pieces in that grandest of sense. Yes, you can get the arms going out much like you'd want to position him on a surfboard. So that is a definite plus through and through. But then when you want to put him on the surfboard, it's really just one way and that's it. There's no swapping. There's no magnets. There's nothing like that. All of which would come later with newer toy versions of the Silver Surfer. And once you have fixed him to the surfboard, he's definitely on there to stay. You can flip him over. You can have some fun. You can get him soaring through your living room if you so choose. And yes, for the most part, with the way his articulation is handled... Sure, you can get him into very much that surfer pose, and that benefits Norrin Rad tremendously. However, there's no stand, and there's really no way to position him on your shelf with just him standing on the surfboard, unless you have a stand of some sort. And back in the day, there wasn't really many choices for this. You kind of had to configure something for yourself. But yes, you can definitely do it. And like I said, with the position, with the way his arms are, it may be very fixed, very much one way to do it. But you can definitely have some fun. And what I like in particular is that 
He kind of looks cool just adrift out in space. You get him on a standee. You get him sitting on his surfboard. He's pondering the mysteries of the universe, searching endlessly for his Shalabal and his home planet of Zen La. Now, I imagine a few of you out there are wondering how do these stack up to the more modern Marvel Legends? And with a recent Silver Surfer in comparison to this 30th anniversary version, yes, you can see the definite improvements. A lot more articulation. The board is a lot more slender on the newer Marvel Legends, but I do like that this 30th anniversary Silver Surfer looks more like a surfboard. It's kind of a give and take sort of deal. But yes, the improvements are are definitely there after all these years, as they should be, although I do prefer magnets when attaching my Silver Surfer. The difference is, though, with the Frankie Ray Nova. Now, with the HasLab Galactus, we did get a Marvel Legends take on Frankie Ray. I'll be honest and say I don't think it's the greatest job. She's more of a goldish yellow figure, which kind of sort of captures the look of Frankie Ray, but this original one still takes the cake for me, especially if you have a Galactus setup in your collection. Now, she's entirely too big. There are some proportion issues, but it's the chrome, it's the hair that makes her stand out. So while she won't necessarily look fantastic next to more modern Marvel Legend figures, being held by Galactus, yeah, I'd say that definitely works. The Frankie Ray that we got with the Galactus HasLab is just okay, but it could have been so much better. In juxtaposition with the better Ray Bill figure, he actually works really well. He's more of a crouched figure, again, very pre-posed, but he is a larger character. And again, with the stylistic choices, with that paint, with the chrome, he definitely fits in with those characters. But oddly enough, the one that really takes the cake overall is the Megan Alien. His size, his height, it's all up in the air as to what we're really looking at here. But in terms of the Silver Surfer, the cosmic entities, the cosmic nature of the Marvel Universe, He's just a cool looking alien. And to be honest, he fits in rather well with your modern Marvel Legends. And now with all that being said, that will wrap it up for my Retro Shiz look back at the 1997 Silver Surfer, the 30th anniversary wave by Toy Biz. Four very cool characters translated to plastic. Although I will say in his own line, the Silver Surfer ends up being the dud of the wave. Some very cool chrome attached to that silver surfboard along with his silvery skin really would have made him oh so prominent. But the real takeaway, the one that still is prominent to this day and age, the Megan Alien, followed by Nova and then of course Beta Ray Bill. All of those can fit in your collections in one way or another for your Marvel Legends. And that is what's so amazing to see all these years later. And of course, tastes may vary, but it's just nice to see that your imaginations are not limited. You can display and show off your collections however you so choose, but it really is these old toys that put a smile on my face. The sculpts alone, the chrome, Yes, the articulation is going to be very limited, but it is so cool to see what we had before and to what we are getting now. So to really appreciate that, I know a lot of people like to say, it doesn't have this now, it doesn't have this. This is what we all grew up with, and it is a lot of fun to just see the transitions between all these old sculpts to these beautiful characters that we're getting now in action figure form. So. You've heard my thoughts. Now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Silver Surfer. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, not to worry. We got plenty more retro shiz on the way. And when we do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.